Do I have to actually talk right into this? No. I don't. So, I feel like a newsreader. This is Kevin Maurer from CNN. <laughs> yep. Um, thanks for the... No problem. It's a great pleasure. Thanks for being interested. Nobody else is. <laughs> You remember one of the <coughs> most interesting surprises that has ever <coughs> occurred to me on the festival. Um, you're soon up with a new album in the market. How much can we know at this point? The new album is, we hope to deliver it to, to Nuclear Blast by the end of August, okay. which means that the release should be September, October. Um, because the first album was so well received and because it sold so well and because it was everything that it was, um, we know that we have a, a lot to prove with the second one um, and we've kind of approached it in a... I mean, and the other like, big, really big issue is the fact that the, the first album, all the songs were already written uh, and all we had to do was to polish them and modernise them, um, whereas we, now, I mean, we, we, we practically used up all of the old back catalogue. Um, now, as the band's principal songwriter, um, it's taken me probably two years uh, to write uh, the next album. And the reason why it's taken such a long time is, as I was just about to say, we have we have a lot to prove with this. Um, we're not the kind of, the, of band who will accept second best in anything that we do. There's this constant quest to improve the music and the, the appearance and the stage show and just everything that we do. Um, so. Most of the writing process consisted of me spending days and days um, in the studio writing stuff and then just deleting it all because I just didn't think it was good enough. So, you know, what, what we have left, uh, the stuff that didn't end up in the rubbish bin, um, is really the, the best that, that, that we can possibly do. Um, and the second thing I think that's, that's really important and which hopefully everybody will hear um, when the album is released is that most albums these days, they tend to be... Um, kind of recorded in the studio first um, and then the band will go away and learn how to play all the new material to go out and do shows uh, and the problem with that is that the album can often sound very artificial and very you know cut and pasted together uh, especially you know, with, a, with a lot of the modern metal genres and we're also determined that this wouldn't happen so the approach we've taken with this one is that um, all of the new songs, uh, I mean, six months ago, Andy Sleep and I started spending time in the studio with, you know, with a drum computer program, um, actually recording demos of all of this material. Um, and a lot of the songs we actually took out and played live. Uh, to, I mean, at the Derby show that you came to, I and mean, there were three, three new songs there. And having the ability to actually learn to play these things as a band and go out and try them in front of audiences has, has been invaluable. Um, because A, it's, it's meant that, you know, we can, we can instantly figure out if, if something is working really well or if it's not, and then we'll take it away and you know, make little changes. But also, once you start playing new songs live as a band, changes start to happen almost organically. You know, you start to push and pull on the tempos and you get little ideas and little, for, for little fills and little hooks around kind of vocal lines. And obviously it inspires everybody to kind of put more ideas in. Um, and so... The, the songs have, uh, even though they've been written f uh, kind of five or six months ago, they've, they've evolved um, from the original demo form. Uh, you know, some of them we've, we've shortened them and put a additional bits in. Um, so you know, it's it's shaping up really, really well. Um, and even though you know, I don't want to give too much away, what I can tell you is that the next album will be it will be darker uh, than the first one um, in terms of its. In terms of some of the music that's on there, um, it will be much darker lyrically uh, because David um, has just blossomed as a, a really fantastic lyric writer. Um, and you know, we, we, and, and like the ideas and stuff that we have for the cover, the artwork is just, yeah, we, we think it'll really upset a lot of people, uh, which is great. So, yeah, I mean, we, we're, and also uh, last week at uh, Bang Your Head uh, in Ballingen in Germany. Uh, that festival is only kind of 25 kilometres from where Nuclear Blast are based. Yeah. Um, so all the Nuclear Blast guys were down there, and we we played them. Um, it's the first time they've heard it, and like they're they're just they're really excited about it as well. So so yeah, and we have a title, and it, but I'm not good, you know. No, I, I I'm going to keep I, this till a little bit later. So, but on the previous album, 
you added a lot of small little effects and uh, passings and everything. Yeah. Children choir or. You know, yeah, all, all that stuff. Sounds. I mean, and that, that's another really important thing to say, is that everything that everybody loved about the first album will still be on this one, but more and bigger and stranger. Um, in actual fact, all, all the, you know, the, like the first album just ran non-stop. It, like you start at the beginning yeah. and all the way to the end. This one will do the same. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, the best thing I can say is that I, um, I mean, we have a we have a provisional running order for everything as well, and like the first fifteen minutes, at the end of the first fifteen minutes, you just you're just dead. <laughs> you know, it's so exhausting. It's this onslaught of of stuff, which is great. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, all, all of the uh, all of the soundscapes and all the uh, the, the humour and all the, the the strange things that that were around on the first one will. Will definitely be on the second one, and, and probably more as well. Uh, and that's something that, that's still like, developing all the time, uh, because again, in exactly the same way that when you record a demo and then you play the song live, it gives you more ideas to, to put more into it. How yes. often do you guys get to practice? Because on stage you're quite a compact band, but uh, you've been idle for such a long time, so you don't sound as the kind of band that gets time to practice. But probably. You well, we do. We don't I mean, know we, about yeah. That. But, well, the, the thing, as I said earlier on, I mean, everything that we do is done to a level of quality, and the only way that that level of quality yeah. can be maintained is to rehearse regularly. So how often? At least know? every week. At least, at least, at least one night every week. Um, and obviously, as at the moment, we're, I mean, we have we had Ballingham last week. We have Hammer Open Air today. Um, we have Bloodstock, which is you know the most important show of the year probably for us in our in our home home country. In is it three weeks time? Three. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously at the beginning of November there's like 26 shows across 13 countries with the Monomath and Carcass. Um, so we we do rehearse, you know, we, we're, and obviously we're evolving new ideas as well all the time uh, for the stage set and, uh, you know, some of the stuff that you saw at Derby with the, the stilts and the trident and all this stuff. Um, and you can't, I mean, with all the pyrotechnics as well, you cannot just walk out on stage and just hope that everything is going to be all right. Um, and obviously our rehearsals, they also include our crew guys and, and everybody else involved in the production as well. So, yeah, it's an no, important part of what we do. You're not scared of the upcoming tour? No, scared? No, Bands that no. don't rehearse have a hard time going Well, to I mean, it, it's, um, it's all about quality, Andrea. You know, you can, um, you know, you ask a football player, you know, a professional football player, he trains, he yeah, trains. Yeah. I mean, all, all, all the public see is like 90 minutes on a Saturday uh, and they expect the guy to be fantastic exactly. and score goals. But into that 90 minutes goes a whole week of training and everything else. And it's just the same for us as well. Great to hear. Will you take the church help with you? Uh, no. Um, two reasons. A, well, three reasons. First, cost. Um, we have a very, very limited budget to do the tour. Secondly, uh, the fact that it's not our tour. It's a Monomath's. You know, it's a Monomath's tour, and it's it's Carcass's tour. We are, you know, we're, we're the opening band. Um, you know, we will go on and do 35, 40 minutes to, okay. and our job is to warm up the crowd. Um, for the for the for the headline act, you know, and we're honoured and privileged to be on it with them. But you know, our day will come. You know, there will be a, a headline hell tour X years in the future, and uh, you know, with the full. I mean, you know, if if we if we were popular enough and if we had the budget, I mean, yeah, we'd be we'd be doing what what Ramstein do. You know, we'd. I mean, that that is the goal. Seriously, that that's where we would like to be. To see you you know? on a boat. Just, just more fire. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Tell us the story of the church. How did it come to life? The Church of Hell. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it 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 was just we we we, we play shows and obviously we're we're away in foreign countries for a lot and we we have you know we spend a lot of time waiting around and like today we yeah. like we've been waiting all day and we're not going on stage and we talk you know and, and some of our best idea and we drink after the show obviously <laughs> never before the show always afterwards okay. and some of our best ideas come out in um, you know when, when we when we we've kind of having a little party after the show I mean the idea for the for the stilts and the pan costume and the truck that happened on part way through the acceptor uh, you know we'd finished a show we're on the bus on the way to the next one, just having a few beers, and 
I can't remember whose idea it was, but somebody said, yeah, let, let's, let's get Dave on, like, six-foot-high stilts, you know, some horns, and I was like, yeah, 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 great idea, you know, and I'll make a trident, you know, and we'll, oh, let's have some fire coming out the end of it. And that, that's how these, these ideas evolve. Um, and, I mean, probably 95% of the stupid ideas that we have never actually make it to reality, but some of them do. Um, so, and every, you know, everybody is involved in this in this process. Everybody puts uh, me. That's well. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a carpenter by trade. Uh, that's well. Yeah, I mean, the stage that I built and uh, most of the band's props I built, uh, the pulpit and all that stuff that you've seen, uh, the gargoyles. I, I made all those. So, well, it's cheaper than buying them from you know a big production company. And you see that that's the other thing as well. You know, you, you, you sort of come to one of our headline shows and there's all the stage set and everything and the whole thing is totally homegrown you know there's no I mean we don't have a big production company working for us everything is but is it like your job as well or is it just a hobby and your um, it's my job as well I mean I, you know I, we all still have day jobs um, and my, my day job is that I'm a carpenter you know I, I make things like this but I'm not gargoyles and you know I do I, I do kitchens and, and furniture and stuff like this so but yeah and when I'm, you know, when I'm not doing that or rehearsing with the band or, you know, playing... And what about the fire? Do, is it also you who figures out the exact quantity of everything? That um, well, no, I mean, we have a, there's, a, there's a company in, in the UK that actually manufacture all the pyrotechnic devices. Okay. Um, and our propane system, we, you know, we bought, because, yeah, I mean, you can't, you know, make your own propane gas system. It's, I don't it's know a, you can do Well, it's it. a little... Well, you can, but it's a little dangerous, you know, so... I mean, yeah, we, we involve, you know, professional companies um, and we buy, you know, we buy things for the stage set, uh, which, you know, are too dangerous for us to make ourselves. But I mean, yeah, a lot of the stuff is, is homemade. What's your favourite of this? Uh, the spinning trident, it just, it's, it's just so epic. Yeah. And we've got some bigger, you know, bigger gerbs for the end now that are like 15 metres or something. It's just, just <laughs> mad. So we're using those at Bloodstock, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> More fire. If I, if I can ask a question just to tie on from that. There was, suppose the ideas that's been had that one person thought, I've got a great idea, we've got it, and everybody else just looked at it and went, what? All of them. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I mean, the just came to fruition, the, the, the church, the pulpit. What's the one that somebody's come up with that everybody else has thought, no, that, that's just too far, that's just... Um, all of them, really. <laughs> um, but then I'll, I'll think... I'll, I'll go and make it. I'll, I'll just make it anyway, and just you know, just show it to the guys. Um, and the trident was one of those ideas. And uh, I thought, well, I'll make it anyway, you know. So I just ordered all the pipe work and, and just kind of brought it to the rehearsal room and said, just, just. And I, I'd got it all loaded with the, the they're called gerbs, the things that fire all the. And um, I said, just watch this, uh, and everybody stood back, and I fired it. I thought that was great, and then it started to spin, and everybody said. We have to use it. It's just fantastic. And how did so, Dave take it when you told Dave? By the way, you're going to be on stage in furry leggings and six foot stilts with a flaming trident. Um, he was really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the thing was, like, like you know, I, t I told you that that idea came up on the acceptor. Yeah. Well, I mean, literally the day we got back, I was straight on eBay, um, ordering the, you know, the. Because I mean the stilts, uh, you, you, you obviously you can't see them because they're hidden inside his, yeah. his legs, but they're actually the stilts that plasterers use. You know when the plastering right. ceilings. Um, so they have a, it's kind of a like a big foot, and the whole thing is articulated. Then there's a platform that his, his real feet go on, um, which is then strapped with Velcro. So, it, uh, but he's actually he's actually used though. You know he's got a theatrical background. Um, he was in a, a play called. Um, what the hell was it called? I think it was either Bat Boy or something like this, where he was actually on stilts on stage for kind of six months. So, you know, we, we put these things on it, and he can just walk in them just like straight away. He's really good on them, you know, so... It's, it's good. Uh, did you ever have bad accidents with those fires? Never. Never. There's too much thought and planning goes into it. Um, you know, these are... It's all very well, you know, kind of laughing about all the pyros and the fire and all this kind of stuff. But these are dangerous devices. Um, in actual fact, tomorrow, um, another one of our crew guys, we, you know, we, we, we're paying for him to go on a, a, a professional pyrotechnic safety course. 
uh, which is obviously costing the band a lot of money. Uh, but it'll also mean that we've got another guy on the crew who is a member of the Association of Stage Pyrotechnicians. Uh, you know, and, and it just you can't mess about with safety. It's uh, it's just something which you know. I mean, we're entertainers. We're a, we're a professional band, and we're professional entertainers. And our job is to entertain people, not hurt them. You know, so not to set fire to them. Yeah, so. So the no, posters uh, that you guys put up in the, the foyer at the, the Derby gig. Yeah. Was how much of that was showmanship, and how much of that was actually? Yes, you guys are. You know, if you're not insured, if this goes off in your face. It's fifty-fifty. But I mean, seriously, you're not. I mean, it was, we were <coughs> kind of close to the gargoyles offices when they went off. The Certainly. Board, so. Well, I mean, with, with 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 the propane gas system, there is a specified three-meter exclusion zone. Oh, so, you just um, so yeah, and that's obviously why there's a pit at the front. Um, but obviously, you guys are inside the pit, so we, we just we just felt it appropriate to tell you people. I mean, it, it, and it's important that you know because obviously. You know, the, the propane burners are hidden inside those gargoyles, and unless you knew about it, you know, if you're kind of hanging over one of them, you know, <laughs> so just about the, the element of danger. That was the one thing. Yeah, it's uh, and it's they're hot. You know, they're they're really hot when those things go off. So, you know, we we, we care about people's safety a little bit. Yeah, if you start emulating fans, it's not going to go down well. <laughs> no. How hard was it to teach everybody to speak fire? Um. Surprisingly easy. I mean, and it's 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 all about technique. Um, what you have to do. I mean, well, first of all, getting the fuel. You know, the the, the, the correct type of fuel is very important. And what you have to do Why is. Did to, you <clears throat> uh, it was actually Tony who used okay. to do it back in you know back in the day. Um, but the fuel that you use is um, is a mixture of kerosene and paraffin, <clears throat> and it's very, very important to use the correct fuel because. Um, like the best fuel is, is something which if you have a bowl full of it or a cup full of it you actually put a flame in and it won't catch, it's like diesel if, if you get a match and you put it in a cup of diesel it will put it will extinguish the match uh, but then if you take the same fuel and you vaporize it it will mm -hmm. it will yes. catch fire uh, and what you have to do when you're fire breathing is basically put a small amount in your mouth and then you kind of go <coughs> and you vaporize it and it's actually the vapor that, that, that catches fire um, obviously, if you use gasoline or something, it's you know you you die. Your lips are still intact. So yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, so. You do it right, I guess. But yeah, yeah. It, 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 but again, it, um, it it took a little practice. I mean, in fact, we practiced with milk uh, to start with because no, it's, well, it, water's too thin, um, right. and kerosene and paraffin. It's kind of got this slightly um, viscous texture like milk. Um, so the trick is to, to, to learn how to vaporise milk first. Does a mixture of kerosene and paraffin taste as bad as you kind of running your Well, the, 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 the trick is not to swallow it, because if you do swallow it, it will give you horrific yeah. diarrhoea. <laughs> <laughs> no, re really. I mean, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you go to the chemist shop, <laughs> you know, seriously, if you go to the chemist shop and you, and you, you know, you, 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 you need a laxative, they will, they will give you something that has liquid paraffin in it, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an extreme laxative. And we've had some fun with... <laughs> yeah. It's the sort of thing you sort of learn by doing twice, I suppose. You get it wrong the first time, you're like, no, I'm well, not no, And again, there, you know, there are things we've learned. I mean, we, 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 we swallow um, activated charcoal capsules before we do this, so that if, if, you, if you swallow some accidentally, then, you know, the charcoal absorbs it and you're not kind of running backwards and forwards to the, to the toilet, so... I, how much of those pirate, I mean, if you really have just 30, 40 minutes, how much of that stuff are you bringing to the tour which is coming up now? What, the pyrotechnic stuff? Yeah, or the whole, like, show stuff. Almost, almost none. Uh, I mean, as far as the Monomath and Carcass tour is concerned, as I said, we're, we're, the, we're the opening so it's band. Be makeup and clothes yeah, it'll be, it'll be us doing what we do. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's just. It's, it's just not. Appropriate for a support band to have a big pyro show on a on a support gig. Um, as I said, it's it's their tour and it's it's an honour and a privilege for us to be on it. Um, yeah, we're very very lucky to be to be on that tour because it's one of the biggest tours in Europe. Um, as I said, our job is to is to basically open the show and warm the crowd up because it's uh, you know the, the crowd are there to see Carcass and and, and and on a moth. And as far as we're concerned, you know if we if we make some friends along the way, then you know, we've, we've, we've done our job. Uh, so, one of, the, one of the most important reasons why we've always kind of focused on, on, you know, making the show as visually entertaining as possible is that, you know, we, we totally understand that what we do doesn't appeal to everybody. 
um, but would rather you know have people stand there because they you know, they like to watch it rather than just go to the bar. Uh, and one thing that we've noticed over all the all the shows that we've played, and there've been a lot, you know, a lot of different countries, is from the moment we come on stage, nobody ever leaves. Nobody ever leaves. Um, you know, they'll all stay and watch it all the way through to the end, rather than you know, kind of disappear to the bar. And that tells us that um, that what we're doing is the right thing. And obviously, even if they're not particularly into the band musically, uh, there's always something in interesting to watch, you know, or something to smile at, uh, uh, or you know, and. and Again, it, even though a lot of the music that we do has a, you know, very important kind of quite dark message, you know, if if you want to communicate a message to an audience, I mean, there are, there are really two ways that you can do it. You can either really, really force it down people's throats, and the problem then is that, you know, most people will will just kind of put up a barrier after the first song, or you can kind of dress it up as something else, um, and just get it across a little bit more subtly by. You know, putting a, a big shit-eating smile on somebody's face, and yeah, and that's that's what we do, uh, and it just yeah, you know, just it just kind of seems to work for us really. Yeah, well, you know, it's. Uh, if you could choose one co-headliner to have a co-headliner band ever, what which band would it be? What the perfect tour? Um, perfect match. I would love to do a big tour with King Diamond. I mean that would be my, you know, a world tour with King Diamond. You can swap musicians. Um, oh, that would just be <laughs> the ultimate, you know. And uh, you know, Bloodstock this year. I mean, King Diamond's headlining on the Friday, and I will be there. You know, King Diamond shirt, front row. <laughs> just, yes. Yeah, that would be great. Do you ever forget your stuff on stage? You have so many synchronizations. <laughs> um, Does it happen? N but it, no. Uh, all yeah, having said that. To, to explosive in the Bible before you go on stage. Does that ever happen? That's that's only happened once. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Just just the once. <laughs> just. You're, you're never gonna let me forget that, are you? <laughs> it was so like a just... space when you walked. You spoke to him as you walked on. You went. I'm going to throw it to the ground deck because... Well, you, you, know, you know that I, I told you that we're always trying to involve things. We have a, a twist. I mean, it won't be ready for Bloodstock, but w there will be a twist to, that, to the exploding Bible. We have a... It's David's idea. And he said, don't you think it would be a good idea if we did this? And I said, yes. So I've got some more work to do in the garage. Well, if Andrea's finished, I've got one question I'd like to... It's the same question I always kind of speak to you and wrap up the interviews with. And every time I ask you, it gets a little bit more... Yeah, a little bit more. But has it sunk in yet? What, you, know, you guys were all doing different things, and now you're basically touring the world, playing the, the biggest festivals. Has it sunk in what you've actually achieved here, what you've got? Here? Uh, I guess it's. <laughs> the, right, the, it's, it's always difficult to, uh, to answer that question because at the, at the end of the day, we, we're all just ordinary guys. Um, I mean, the signing session last week in Germany was just mental. Um, and, and, I, and I guess it's it's the fact that I think it's probably got a lot to do with the fact that you know because we kind of came into this late, um, n none of us ever ever dreamed that anything like this would happen. Um, right from day one, we've always just taken one one show at a time, and literally every single show that we do is is a bonus. Um, and people have often said to us, you know, every single gig you ever do, you know, even a little tiny festival, it's like you, you're headlining Wembley. Um, and that, that is, is basically the philosophy of, of the whole band, really. You, we will always give everything 100%. Um, and, it, and it's just kind of what we do. But I mean, as, as I said right at the beginning, we're basically just ordinary guys. Um, who are just absolutely loving what we're doing. Um, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, who who wouldn't be? You know, it's 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 just it's just something that we never never thought would happen to us. Um, and as a result of that, you know, it's kind of it's made us very very humble about. Um, I mean, we always have been. You know, we've known you for a long time, and we, we've always been the same. You know, we're and, and the, the fans the fans know all this as well. I mean, we we always always. I mean, after every show we do, we always try and make a point of going out into the crowd and you know hooking it with people. Um, and you know, we were talking to the guys from Nuclear Blast last week, and they said that it's just like nobody else does that. Um, you know, they can't. They haven't got another band on the roster who will go out into the crowd and, um, you know, pose for pictures and 
do all this kind of stuff. And it means, but it, it just means the world to these people. Um, and for us, you know, they're the, as I've said before many, many times, you know, without these guys, would be nothing. I mean, they buy our merch, they buy our albums, they come and see us. Um, and it's just absolutely the least that we can do. And it's just, you know, it's two minutes of our time. And it's just, you know, it's, but it means the world to them. Um, and it means the world to us as well, you know. So, I mean, we're, we're, I don't think we'll ever change. You know, there's, there's, uh, but it's, seriously, it's an ego free band. No, it's, it, it, it really is. There's, there's no, you know, there's no egos here. There's no kind of rock star pretension. Um, but yeah, we, we're loving it and, uh, you yeah, long, know, long may it continue. Does that answer the question? That answers the question, yes. yes Good. Sir. Good. Oh, never no, it never will, mate. Never will. <laughs> that was finally lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll be good. <laughs>